Hey guys, welcome back. I wanted to take a few minutes to describe for you how you deal with asynchronous code in JavaScript. I noticed when I was helping people debugging and writing code this week that there was some confusion on this point. So let me see if I can help straighten that out. There's a couple of different ways we deal with this in JavaScript, usually involving callback functions or promises or async await. So I'll talk a little bit about each of those ideas and let's take it a step at a time. First of all, I want to use a function that's built in called setTimeout that enables us to create asynchronous functions that get called after a certain period of time. Most asynchronous functions get called when certain conditions occur that we don't have a lot of control over. But this function is nice because I can actually tell you when the thing is going to go in terms of time. So let's see how that works. First of all, setTimeout is a function that is, it's defined in global scope in Node, it's defined in global scope in a browser, so it's something you can just use. We'll be using the second version here that requires a function and a delay. The function gets called after the delay specified in milliseconds as the second argument to set timeout. So uh, let's see how that works. Let's go ahead and pull up some code. Okay, so let's start with um, a very simple program. I'm not even going to put set timeout in there. Um, I'm going to put a log of a statement that I'm getting ready to call set timeout. I'm going to go get the current time and I'm going to print it out. So let's go ahead and run that in a terminal in Visual Studio Code. See how that thing comes out. There we go. It says calling set timeout. It says before set timeout. It's at this time and then it finishes. So what I want to do now is to actually call set timeout. Now I've got to pass in a function, so let's call the function foo. We'll just name it that. And let's say it's going to be a thousand milliseconds. Now the problem is I need to define the function foo, so let's go ahead and define it. Um, let's just console log um, in function foo. Okay. And let's run this to see how this happens. So again, I've got a time before I called set timeout. I got the in function foo, and it took about a second. Actually, let's do this. Let's say let after, no, let in foo be date now. So we'll go ahead and get the current time, and let's log that guy out. And I'll say, there we go. So now when we're in foo, it'll actually print out the date. Let's see how that works. <clears throat> okay. So it says I'm in function foo, and it tells me when it is. That's at 1634. This was at 1633, so it's basically a second later. We can actually be a little more precise here. Let's say plus colon plus, uh, let's put in in foo minus before. So that's actually a difference of time in milliseconds. There we go. So it's going to print out the date, and then it's going to print out, it prints out 1,004 milliseconds. So that's approximately a second, within four tenths of a millisecond, or four milliseconds, sorry. Um, okay, so let's try this. Let's add, So after foo's been called, let's go ahead and call console log again, and we'll say uh, after set time out. So, oh, actually, let's do this. Put it up here. Before I even define the function foo, I'm going to write after set timeout. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and define after and after. And here we'll say 
after. There you go. Um, I don't need that. Okay, good. So let's see, what's it going to do? It's going to call before set timeout, then it's going to call set timeout, then it's going to get the time after I called set timeout and say after set timeout. Let's see what happens. Wait a minute. <clears throat> it says before set timeout, it calls it. Then it calls after set timeout. And notice the time is essentially the same. Then it says in function foo. And then it says a second later. 1834, 1835. So it's actually calling after set timeout before it calls foo. If you think about it, that makes perfect sense. Nothing, when you call set timeout, it doesn't call foo then. It waits a thousand milliseconds. And you don't want JavaScript to wait around for a thousand milliseconds before it does anything. So it just marches on and keeps, keeps going. The function foo doesn't get called until the uh, timeout actually fires. So this is uh, typical of a JavaScript situation. You don't, when you call an ace, when you have something happen asynchronously, it doesn't happen right away. You have to pass a function in that's going to handle whatever the asynchronous activity is. That's going to get whatever you're waiting for. Okay, so that's that's kind of the way that works. So that's not too bad uh, in terms of a function that I can define ahead of time that gets called when the timeout occurs. But there's a problem with that, and that is that I invented a function. I had to name it. I pollute my namespace with that function name, but all I really need to know is that the function gets called when the timeout occurs. So we can save ourselves a name in the namespace by anonymizing the function and passing it in directly. Okay, so um, let's go back to where we were. I, I have my set timeout calling foo. You know, there's another way to declare foo Instead of declaring it as a function like this, I could make foo an expression, a, very, a function expression. So I could say let foo equals, and then instead of saying function foo, I could use the right arrow notation. Let's do that. And spell it that way. So now I'm saying I'm going to assign the variable foo a function expression which is a expression that takes nothing and returns all this stuff. And then I'm going to set timeout to foo. Let's try that. There you go. That works pretty much the same way. It's just that uh, foo is no longer declared as a function. It's now a variable whose value happens to be an anonymous function object. But why do I want to set a variable here and then pass it here when I could just pass that value directly in? So what I can do is simply get rid of the foo altogether. Yep. And paste, whoops, paste it in as the value. So now that function is a value that I stuck in that first slot of the set timeout function. And now I don't have a foo anywhere in my program because that function is anonymous. I didn't have to assign a name, and I can save my namespace a name. So I shouldn't say I'm in function foo. I should say I'm in function anonymous. Mm-hmm, there you go. So let's see how that works. It should be okay. Well, I still say in foo there, but you get the idea. The point is the function has no actual name. So. There you go. Boom. Okay. Very good. Okay. So now we see how anonymous functions can be passed around as objects and declared in place. Now let's look into the concept of a promise. What is a promise and what does it mean? So a promise is basically an object that can either be successful or it can fail. And what we have to do is supply to the promise constructor uh, a, a function that accepts another function that's a success function and a second function that's a fail function. Let's see how that works. Okay, so let's see how that works in practice. So the idea is um, we want to change this set timeout callback 
to a promise. So the idea being, um, we'll leave everything the same up until the set timeout part. And I'll say, let my promise be a new promise. What do I have to give the promise? Well, I have to give it a function that's going to have a resolve and possibly a uh, reject function. Let's, let's just do a resolve function to keep it straightforward. So I'm just going to say resolve and then open brace, close brace like that. And then inside this function that I'm passing into the promise function, I'm going to call set timeout. So boom, like that. Okay, so I'm calling set timeout. Um, I'm giving it a function that it's going to call after a thousand milliseconds, and this is the stuff that's going to happen. I'm going to leave it the same, except that in addition to doing the stuff it did before, I'm also going to tell it to call resolve. And resolve is going to pass an argument, and that argument is what's going to be passed to the then function of the promise. So I'll say resolve done. So I'll pass done, the string done, to resolve. And then what I'd like to do is to, we'll leave this stuff here. We've, uh, instead of after set timeout, this is after creating the promise object. Okay, so we created the promise object. This is um, before creating the promise object. Okay, uh, and this is the promise version. Okay, so I'm uh, calling date now before I create the promise object. I'll create the promise object, then I'll print this out after creating the promise object. But how do I actually execute the promise object? Well, I've got to, I've got to say I want to use the my promise object, and I have two options. I can either say catch or then. If I say then, I'll get called when the resolve function is called. If I say catch, I'll get called when the reject function is called. So then is for success, the success scenario. Catch is for the error scenario. So I'll just say then. Um, and what am I going to get? I'm going to get a result. Um, oh, I want a function that gets the result. So it's function. And then what are we going to do? We're going to say console.log. Uh, we got the result plus result. There you go. Boom. Okay. So what should happen here? I'm going to print out this before creating the response object or the promise object. I'm going to create the promise object. That is not going to take very long. None of this code is going to get called at that point. I'm just creating an object, right? I'm defining a function and creating an object, but nothing's actually happened yet. Then I'm going to print out after creating the promise object, so it should be almost exactly the same time, since this doesn't take very much time. Then I'm going to say my promise dot then. That's what's going to actually invoke the promise. That's what's going to execute uh, the set timeout. Okay, and uh, then when resolve gets called, okay, then it'll call this function after the then. Then is what happens after the resolve gets called, and then it'll say, we got this result. The result, of course, is going to be done. So let's try it. There you have it. Boom. So we created the promise object, and then uh, after a thousand milliseconds, we got the result done. So that's, that's basically how it works. Now, what if we wanted to have a, uh, the possibility of an error? How about instead of calling set timeout every time, we instead say let r equal math.random, and then if r is less than 0 0.5, then we call the set timeout function and everything that goes with it. Else, we call reject 
So I'll add reject up here. With some argument. Now half the time this is going to call set timeout, but half the time it's going to fail. And we won't know which it is until we actually execute the promise. So to handle that, I've got to add a catch. So then, if it's successful, we get the result. Otherwise, we get the failure function. How about that? Oh, that time it worked. Oh, what's the chance? There, finally it failed. Okay, you don't know if it's going to fail or work. It'll just depend on the phase of the moon and who knows what else. There you go, it worked that time. Anyway, you get the idea. So you have a promise that uh, execute some asynchronous code. If it's successful, you call resolve. If it fails, you call reject. So that's the way it works. And finally, we have async and await. If you click on the link in the PDF for documentation, you'll get go to an article that describes async and await. Um, I want you to uh, take a look at that, but I'll show you just roughly how that works in practice. Okay, so this is our last step um, and there's no law that says you have to use this idea I just think you're probably going to encounter it as you read and study different ways of approaching these problems of asynchronous uh, functions so uh, I think I should share it with you so there's another approach it's called async and await and the idea is you don't call the then method and you don't call the catch method instead you define another function yet another function so we do it something like this. We could say async function uh, foo, say. I know I keep having these uh, functions. Um, anyway, there's a way to do it anonymously as well, but let's just one thing at a time. Um, then the idea is you say, look, I want to let the result that I want, I'm waiting for, instead of having to put it in a callback function, I'll just say a wait and then the promise. So what was the promise was my promise, right? And that's it. Boom. And then that will basically behind the scenes, it will do all the stuff that we were doing before. It'll build a, a, response function and a reject function and everything. Oh, actually, what I want to do is to put this in a try. And then when the result comes, I want to console log it out. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll just say result. So that will be in the success case, it'll come back from the a wait. If it doesn't work, then we'll have to say catch and um, catch will be the rejected. Just call it, we can call it whatever we like. It's the rejected value, the thing that comes back when the promise is rejected, and this would, that case, this would be done. So what we could say, oh no, yeah, darn, sorry, darn. So we'll say console.log, oops, plus rejected value. Okay, so that should do it. So uh, that's how you do it. Now notice, this looks like a regular assignment. You're just saying result is equal to the promise. You don't have to do a callback function. You can just assign it as if it was um, gonna wait. It doesn't really wait. It really does do the callback, um, but it's done behind the scenes without you having to worry about it. And then you can use a try catch to catch the error. So let's give that a shot.
Okay, so it says, uh, hang on. I don't see the done. So what did I do wrong? Uh, hang on a sec. Oh, <laughs> you got to call the function. So I forgot to call the, you actually have to call the async function in order for it to, to work. So let's try that. Boom. Yep, oops, darn. Okay, so that time it came through the catch. It was rejected. Remember, 50% of the time it's rejected. 50% of the time it's... Uh, oh, there it's oops, darn again. Hopefully one of these times it'll be yes, done. Mmm, that's suspicious. I'm flipping coins and they're all coming up heads. How is that possible? Uh, do I have another problem? Hang on a second. Apparently it was just the watched pot problem. Um, let's try this again. I just uh, I just ran it and it worked. But uh, it's because I was recording there. Now, now it always works. Let's see. Yes done. Oops, darn. Okay, now it's behaving itself. I don't know. How many times did I flip the coin? Four or five times? And it came up um, heads every time. Crazy. But anyway, that's the idea. So you can make async functions that allow you to use a syntax that looks like it, it's waiting. Or you can just use promises um, directly. Anyway, that's the way it works. See you next time.